Picture this, it's summer 2015, Orso U is chugging right along, it's developing nicely, it's a good metagame. Uh, it's in the tiniest bit of a transitional state, though, because it's got a good foundation, but it's trying to figure out if it's going to go in any significant new directions after the ban of Landris Incarnate. Some players actually thought balance teams would be too strong without Lando, which wound up decisively not being the case. Uh, actually, the most broken thing around, uh, according to many at the time, was Mega Altaria. That, of course, did not last. So, uh, it's into this metagame, that, uh, which the replay on the screen is from, that Hoopa is unleashed. And when I say Hoopa, I mean Hoopa Unbound, of course. Uh, so... Yeah, Oris OU back then and Oris OU today were not that different. I mean, okay, yes, the teams night and day, by and large, right? Within reason. You know, the good Pokemon were still good then and now, uh, of course. But the teams uh, today are... Uh, the teams, team styles, structures, that kind of thing, those are a lot more defined now. Uh, and th this is, of course, because now Oris is an old gen and has been for a long time. Uh, whereas in 2015, 2016, then it was still a new gen, which is not to say that it didn't have its, you know, uh, top styles of team, but they weren't as rigidly, I guess you could say, defined uh, as you would have today. You know, people were still developing things. They were still figuring things out. So there was a lot of experimentation. Not to say that there isn't experimentation today, of course, not at all. But it's generally within the uh, a more defined framework of what we know works. Uh, so the main uh, similarity between then and now is that Auras then and Auras now both largely center around balanced teams. You know, there are hard hitters, of course, and of course there are teams that lean a lot more defensive, or um, offensive is what I want to say, because that's more defining. A lot more defensive, too, as well, but those are generally, you know, those have their issues. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, generally more offensive is also what you think about when you think Oris. You think balance, and then you think, oh, but they're also the more aggressive versions of that, the really offensive teams. But generally you have balance, because even with your hard hitters, then you need to be able to switch around things, at least somewhat, right? Like, nobody's talking about hard countering everything in the game. You know, that was that is very much not possible. But just being able to switch around things uh, in order to get your own offense going. You know, it's what makes Aura such a pleasant, balanced metagame. So, it's uh, with this in mind, we now look at Hoopa. So, uh, Hoopa is unleashed, and it's easy to be, you know, little impressed slash overwhelmed by its offensive potential, even by the heavily power creep saturated standards of Gen 6 OU. I mean, those attacking stats are really nuts. It's got two amazing stabs and you know, all the coverage it could want. You know, you, can, it's, you think, oh, well, Clefable can take it on from full health and, you know, it gunk shots you, for example. Uh, it's got, you know, he has knockoff, good lord. This is a, gen, yeah, gen, it had knockoff even back then. It's crazy. You know, Hyperspace Fury uh, going through Protect is nuts. You know, it's so threatening, you don't even need to use Nasty Plot on it. You know, it can do uh, pretty much anything. It, you know, people were throwing around all sorts of sets. You know, spec or not specs, actually, not at first. Uh, Band, Life Orb, Mixed, or uh, Scarf sometimes even. You know, I remember CL was using Itemless. Uh, so with Magician it could steal attacks, or steal items when it attacked the opponent, which is actually hilarious. Like you Dark Pulse into a Clefable, oh, I got its lefties. So, things like that. Uh, you could do a lot of things. But, here, here's the problem. You know, I just mentioned that kind of balanced structure that was uh, reigning over Oris at the time? And, you know, just kind of generally does. Uh, well, that kind of balance structure does not really lend itself to a Pokemon like Hoopa because it really doesn't have much in the way of defensive utility. Uh, it's Physically, it's so frail. It's so frail physically that it functionally is weak to pursuit. You know, even though it's neutral to it, it just takes so much damage from it. You know, it's also... That quadruple U-turn weakness is also really, really bad 
when you know Scarf Lando and Assault Vest Torn Therian are absolutely everywhere. You know, those are the faster U turns, of course. Uh, and you know, you've got all sorts of strong physical moves, you know, running in every direction in general. Now, special defense is great. You know, it's good enough to take a moon blast from Clef, which is important. But its HP stat just isn't good enough. You know, it doesn't have enough really useful resist. Not to mention, it doesn't really want to be taking special hits in general. It wants to be dishing them out. So, the most Hoopa was going to do for you defensively was uh, figure was uh, if you figure out how to pivot it into like Alakazam somehow then that's pretty much as good as it's going to get. <laughs> and even that's not super reliable, because, you know, it Shadow Balls and Focus Blast, and you're taking a lot. But, you know, it, it can... It's better than nothing, for sure. But yeah, like, even something like uh, in this replay, you say, oh, well, what about you know, Nidoking, uh, which is on Reiku's team here? Yeah, Nidoking actually has defensive utility. You know, it's got... Um, it resists the most common Clefable move set at the time. Call Mine, T-Wave, Moonblast, Softwell. Freest Nido King switch ever. You know, because you think, well, why not just get Hoopa in with uh, switch moves? Like you do with uh, that, or like Crawdaunt, for example. Well, even Crawdaunt has more defensive utility because of Aqua Jet checking things like Volcarona. But yeah, I mean, fair enough. But then there was the other issue, quote-unquote, which was that... Yeah, Hoopa has a lot of really has a lot of power, a lot of really strong moves, but it's tough to figure out just what moves, what set of moves to go with, you know, because it has its has all sorts of issues. Uh, no matter what you do, you know, you can never fit every move you can you want in there. You know, generally people want to use hyperspace because it rips through protect. So you run some sort of like physical set with like mixed. You want to throw an ice punch there, so you're not getting destroyed by a Gliscor, Lander, Therian, and I mean, but you're just getting worn down. I mean, band band is pretty good, but there was just something missing. Like even if you got hoop on the field, then you would not necessarily. I mean, you could threaten you know the hell out of something with it for sure, but it didn't necessarily bring the results. I mean, it got. Plenty of decent usage for sure, and some success, but it was never a consistent Pokemon uh, with its you know mixed and band sets, which were the most popular ones. You know there there was just something missing. I mean, yeah, you can gunk shot Clef and you know knock off and uh, what fighting move did it use? It didn't even have a uh, good fighting move for or a good physical fighting move for like Heatran. So, I mean, I know you hyperspace Fury, but that was generally its thing. You just didn't have quite the spam ability of it, uh, of uh, anything. Especially because hyperspace uh, puts you at minus one defense, and that makes you even more vulnerable to pursuit. And remember, lots of balanced teams are already running Scarf Tyranitar. You know, then other trappers would arise, like Band Weavile, you know, you would throw Pursuit Mega Metagross on, things like that, for sure. But yeah, like you generally, uh, you know, you don't want to be running Focus Blast on a mix set. It's just awkward and... Yeah, so you wind up not really being that reliable into the balance teams you want to be threatening. Uh, and yeah, it, it just didn't bring the consistency. Until uh, this TDK team, you know, a lot of good players were figuring out, look, this, this thing's got to be able to do something reliably. And so uh, they happened upon, I don't know if it was TDK or uh, someone else who happened upon uh, Specs Hoopa, but TDK's team, as you see here, did put Specs Hoopa on the map in a big way because he brought it to this SPL game in February of 2016, I think. And people noticed, like, hey, look, this is, I mean, look at that. <laughs> Hyperspace. I mean, it can definitely do all this, and this is not to downplay the threatening nature of um, the the potential threat of a bandit or mixed Hoopa, but Specs was a lot more spammable because of how good a move Dark Pulse is relative to Hyperspace, which makes Hoopa even uh, easier to deal with, and the fact that it's coming off of uh, Hoopa's higher special attack stat, which also, this is a really big one, it also lets it run Psychic as a secondary stab. So you are threatening Clefable, not with the awkward coverage of Gunk Shot. Because, yeah, Gunk Shot, you know, smacks Clef, but it's also super easy to pivot around because it's not a stab move. And 
and with Psychic, you are just slamming everything else. Like, look at Psychic into um, the team Sweepage is using here. Like, the resists are Heatran and Latios, and those really don't want to be switching into it. So the uh, the move against that Rotom could have just as easily been Psychic. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, with without Hyperspace dropping its defense, then Mega Arrow can't come in and pursue it, you know, pretty much for free. So... Or, you know, to threaten it even more. So that's another big thing. And of course, uh, Focus Blast is a much, much, much better move on a spec set. Because you have the max special attack investment off of Hoopa. Again, Hoopa has a much higher special attack stat. It's the same as Kieran Black's attack. So you want to be using that. And with the power of specs, you're really making the most of using it as a coverage move. And you can even run Trick. But uh, another, here's a really good thing though, that you can run two Psychic moves. You can run Psychic and Psy Shock. Psychic, of course, that's the one that blows everything away. But what happens when Clefable has a bunch of Calm Minds? Oh wait, you don't care because Hoop Unbound will just Psy Shock it. And with much more reliability and not getting worn down by its own Life Orb, like uh, you would with a mix set, you know, trying to gunk shot. So, yeah, this game was a was a big one because after this battle, people realized, oh, both Specs Hoopa are really good, and the team structure that TDK is using is really good. It became really, really popular. I remember, like, even just a week after an SPL, uh, at least one other person was using it. And yeah, see, here's why Clefable is good. Call mind Heatran stuff, uh, and. Oh, the EQ Latios, there it goes. Yeah, look, look at the... <laughs> yeah, so uh, Hoopa is still really... Uh, it's not going to suddenly have it all, all its issues fixed by specs, but the general idea was, oh, Hoopa had all these issues, and it wasn't consistent, and now with specs, it's really consistent, and uh, to the point where it's arguably too much for the tier. You know, people obviously threw around the idea of ban Hoopa right from the beginning, you know, like with such a powerful Pokemon and people like to be, you know, ban happy and such. But, um, yeah, that never really came to any anything serious until after, you know, TDK's uh, started the ball rolling with Specs. And here he is uh, the next week using another balanced team with, I think it's, it's very similar, Another balanced team with Specs Hoopa, and the basic idea was, look, before, the, re the reason nobody really thought of Hoopa before uh, Specs was because it was never going to consistently beat you more than any other wall breaker, like let's say Kirin Black, just because its moves are so pivotable, if it's relying on things like Gunk Shot for Clef, uh, it's really easy to just dance around it like you would any other threat. Look, there's Specs Focus Blast, which is a much easier click when uh, you're Specs and fully invested and not being worn down by Life Orb for a move that might be pivoted into easily. That's really, really big, especially because here's uh, what I'm getting at. You can pivot around it very reliably, uh, or more reliably if it's Band or uh, Spec or, or Life Orb. You know, Band, you don't want to be locking into Zen Head, but it just doesn't have the same punch. Uh, and so it's stronger, its moves are better clicks, and it's less worn down. That was the reason why it wasn't such a big deal beforehand, because you, the basic idea being you don't really have to go out of your way to deal with Hoopa. You're just naturally going to check it, because it's not very fast by aura standards. You know, it'll outspeed walls, but you know, so will you know, any offensive Pokemon. You know, against other offensive Pokemon, yeah, not really. It's not that fast, it doesn't have the bulk of resistances to really uh, do much in that regard. You know, and it, you'll pivot around its attacks and just deal with it by having a good team that deals with wall breakers in general. So you didn't really have to, so you could focus on wearing it down, you know, rocks and spikes, you know, its own life orb. And uh, with specs, suddenly, or you know, just even balance teams with just rocks, you could feasibly do it if you had enough offense. But with specs, it's a lot more of a killer. It, it, um, it's going to... Oh yeah, I missed the turn where it just Psy shocks Venusaur into dust. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because switch, basically switching into Hoopa with such a balanced team is not really feasible. And the 
complaint people had was that if you wanted to run such a balanced team, it forced you to run pursuit because otherwise it would come in over and over. And with specs, it was too easy to force KOs, uh, and in ways that it previously hadn't been able to do consistently. So this game ends with a calm mind clef war, if I remember. <laughs> but look, there it is again. Look, it switch. Look, that is that the second time it's happened. Yeah, look, Hoopa switches into Clefable. Scares it out because Spec Psychic will destroy it, and Dark Pulses. Wow, TDK was nuts. <laughs> uh, what a great player. Anyway, yeah, so now um, now I think here's where the Clef War starts, so we don't really need to focus on that. Okay, so, short version is that eventually, with all this in mind... Oh, wait, no, it comes in again. Did it, did it just do it again? Okay, yeah, look at this. Wow, TDK was insane. Uh, Hoopa comes in on the plus one, plus one clef after Rotom sacrifices itself to get a pain split off. And Dark Pulse just a <laughs> Good, that's max special defense Heatran. A neutral move, and it's doing so much damage. Yeah. That is nuts. Yeah, now here comes the clef war. Uh, which we don't really need to see, so. Yeah, so, uh, what happened is that people... For all the reasons just mentioned, people said, okay, hoop is too much, and it got suspected, and it got banned. So, uh, now I want to, just a quick aside, if you're ever wondering, like, hey, how did uh, Specs Hydreigon get its start in Oris OU? Because people, at first, are like, why use Hydreigon? You know, it's so vulnerable to fairy types. And the basic idea, I believe it was Obi who made the team that Star is using in this game, which is what put uh, Specs Hydreigon on the map, was basically Hoopa showed just how scary Specs Dark Pulse was. And, you know, in the first generation after Steel no longer resisted Dark. Uh, and basically said, hey, well, Hoopa's gone, but Hydreigon seems pretty good. You know, it's not as strong, of course, but it's still Hydreigon. It's still really powerful. It's got a great secondary stab, just like Hydra uh, just like Hoopa does. It's got, you know, fa it's got better speed for sure. It's not vulnerable to pursuit. In fact, it resists pursuit, you know, immune to spikes. And yeah, so the existence of Specs Hydreigon pretty much comes from Hoopa getting banned and Obi trying to replicate it. You know, I, I love this game. It's just, uh, Hydreigon coming in over and over and dark pulsing the lights out of everything. <laughs> yeah, so, with this in mind, uh, the... I still don't, uh, even at the time Specs Hoopa was banned, I was uh, one of the few expressing reservation about it. Reservation. And I was not alone. You know, a lot of the top players like, oh yeah, Hoopa's, Hoopa's axed, gotta go. But I was like, I don't, I think, first of all, I think there were bigger issues in the tier than, uh, than Hoopa. But even, even, you know, not uh, accounting for them, I just thought, like, Hoopa is not that difference, di not that difference, not that different from any other balance breaker. Uh, because, first of all, you want to run Pursuit on a lot of balanced teams anyway. You know, all sorts of things become insane. Like, something as simple as a Life Orb Gengar becomes really, really nuts for a lot of balance as soon as you don't have that fast Pursuit. So, uh, that, that's just, the, you know, one silly example off the top of my head. But if there wasn't, you know, a lot of Pursuit flying around, then Life Orb Gengar would be a lot, lot scarier. I mean, Shadow Ball, Sludge Wave, you know, with Focus Blast, it, yeah, it's, it's terrifying for a lot. You know, it's even got Icy Wind for things like, uh, not just Gliscor, but also Assault S Torn T coming in. So, which also, you know, helps against Scarf T-Tar, but it's, that's another discussion. So, uh, the basic idea was, look, Hoopa does destroy balance stuff. Yes, Pursuit, Force, all that stuff, but Pursuit is more or less going to be quote-unquote force because I don't think it is on balanced teams in general it because pursue if it's not pursuit then it's just got to be some other method of playing really aggressively so you don't get overrun by big threats right like you know uh, half the stuff that CB Weavile pursuits isn't uh, dark week either like Nido King Mega Charizard Y you know, um, Mega Metacham likes to run Bullet Punch in large part so it doesn't get pursued by Weavile. Mega Metagross, 
You know, Scarf Titar was a lot of uh, balance teams' fail safe against Scarf Metagross. You know, so that kind of dynamic is going to be there anyway. You know, and it's not like you need Pursuit to deal with them because these Pokemon are also hazard vulnerable, or they're not that bulky, all that kind of stuff. So I really did not think Hoopa was unique in this regard. Matter of fact, I had the rather spicy take that I thought Crawdaunt was a more uh, reliable wall breaker than Specs Hoopa uh, at some point. Or maybe not a more reliable wall breaker. It's, it's pretty similar because it's absolutely insane power-wise. But it's also a better Pokemon in general because of its strong Aqua Jet. And that brings me to this replay from Modern Aurus. I've got two replays from Modern Aurus from the most recent Smogum Premier League. And they show what the general metagame is like quite well. Right, so in this game between McMegan and John Filch, then we've got two balance teams. These teams could have been used in 2015, 2016. Right, uh, and they've got yeah, they've got their offensive pokes, they've got their defensive pokes. It's you know hazard heavy, mix of both, right? And in this other game, then we've got uh, PJ using the screaming hyper offense team, and Raisin's got this balance team, uh, just balance offense, whatever you want to call it. It's got a mix of hard hitters and bulk and speed. It's even got a Weavile, uh, so. Uh, these teams are representative of Oris, by and large, right? And y you've got some bulkier teams as well. Like, I know John Phillips was using, uh, like, Chansey kind of bulky offense sort of stuff. But, you know, even those teams, they work because of offense. So, uh, this is generally what the tier is going to be like now. And, a few years ago, I had this idea. Like, I don't think Hoopa is broken, guys. I think it's worth testing. Uh, and a couple other players agreed, but there really wasn't that enthusiasm, that much enthusiasm for it, so it was just kind of my thing. And uh, then I lost interest and, or in you know doing Pokemon tiering in general because it was exhausting and frustrating and stupid and obnoxious. <laughs> and then it, that kind of died with me. It was kind of my thing. So uh, now I guess I'm bringing it back, so maybe we can look at it again. But I remember a lot of the other uh, people who uh, thought Hoopa was broken at the time looked back at it and said, you know, I, yeah, I, it might not have been that bad. It might have been a little exaggerated. Uh, and, you know, e even if, let, like, let's say, let's compare it to DPP Latias. DPP Latias, at the time it was broken, or at the time it was banned, uh, at the time it was banned, it was probably broken. Right? Like, that's tough to contest. But, over time, with the metagame's development, then it became not broken. Right? So even if, you know, whether or not Hoopa was broken then is almost irrelevant. Uh, because even if you think it was, it wasn't, whatever. I don't think it was. But, with the way the metagame is now, and has been for a while, I really find it difficult to believe that Hoopa would be anywhere close to broken. I think it'd be pretty good. I, th I don't think it would be much more. I um, yeah, I think it would be a solid wall breaker. But look at look at these team styles. Like the hyper offense teams, Hoopa is doing nothing against. You know, you might beat Superior one on one. That's as good as you're gonna get. You know, I'm sure you can do some cool stuff with it, of course. But by and large, against hyper offense, Hoopa is not a Pokemon you want. Against this kind of balance team that Raisin's using, I mean, even without the Weavile and, you know, this kind of Zard Y stuff, you know, it's not necessarily Zard Y. There's all sorts of wall breakers you can mix and match. That's why Oris is great. You can run, you know, Mega Metacham, Mega Metagross, whatever you want. Uh, but, you know, these kinds of Zard Y, or Zard X even, they tend to run Weavile or T-Tar, so that pursuit is going to be there. And even, you know, yeah, it's got Slowbro, and yeah, it's going to be annoying to switch into, but it's also not going to come in for free, you know. It's not going to come in for free and mess you up any more than something like Nidoking might uh, with the power of switch moves. That's why, you know, Nidoking and Crawdon are its most comparable pokes because uh, that they function the same way. You know, you got to have, even if you're running a balance team, you got to have aggression. You got to have your hazards, your fast hard hitters, your pursuit, that kind of thing. You got to have those or they are going to just bowl you over. Uh, there's another a great uh, replay from World Cup 2015 where Nidoking does that exact thing. Uh, I should have pulled that one up, but I, it slipped my mind until now. I th I forget it was uh, I forget who it was who it was between. I might have shown it on the channel before, but 
uh, yeah, the the basic idea being that yeah, who, Nido King just comes in over and over on Clef and just destroys something every time. Now, a team like this, like two teams like this, I mean, uh, Phil, John Filch's team is definitely better equipped because it's got the Mega Metagross offense, you know, and yeah, Hoop is a little is on the threatening side for sure, but so is Crawdon. I mean, where's the Crawdon counter on this team either? Or Nido King, same exact thing. You know, you deal with them in the same exact ways. And uh, I don't think Hoopa is particularly... I mean, Hoopa, like, rarely even runs an ice move, so it can't even 1v1 Gliscor like uh, those two might. You know, and uh, it's slower than Nido King. So... And, you know, McMegan's team, definitely more vulnerable, but I don't think it's anything unreasonable. So, the the one thing I guess Hoopa might do is make uh, the tier more f in favor of hyper-offense teams. Which, you know, because, well, you don't want to run balance as much with Hoopa around, but... Again, I don't... I really don't think that you have to go out of your way to check Hoopa more than... Like, what's really going to change? Like, more Pursuit? Like, yeah, like, we don't see enough of that. Um, matter of fact, the what you might see more of is Mega Lop Honey, but you already like, like seeing Mega Lop Honey as the Mega because it destroys Hyper Offense stuff. That's why it's so good. Uh, that's why Mega uh, TDK had it right all the way back then. You know, if I'm going to face something more offensive, then Mega Lop Honey is going to rip it to shreds. And here you have the same thing. So, and that's why Mega Lop Honey is, makes for such a good pairing with Pokemon like Nidoking. You know, you uh, cover both sides. So, you know, and with the popularity of Cofagrigus these days and its toxic spikes, Nidoking might even be preferred because it absorbs them. So, I don't know. I think, uh, I think that there is an argument to at least test Hoopa Unbound uh, in a tournament like SPL. Because, let's be real, you can... Th this has been the case many times. Like, you can hold all the the small tournaments you want with it. I mean, it's a good test, don't get me wrong. It, it is a good uh, way to see what the metagame would be like, but you can't really use it to demonstrate anything definitively because it's just... Um, yeah, it, it's just going to be... You can always say, well, the players weren't invested enough because it wasn't a serious tournament situation. You know, it wasn't like a current gen ladder or anything either. So you got always got to, the final word in these kinds of things always comes from testing it in a real tournament environment. But that's why I think it would be fine in a you know big tournament like SPL because you know the metagame is not going to be that different with Hoopa around. That's the whole idea. You know, it's definitely going to make less of a splash than Latias did when it returned to DPP. And I think that was more than fine. So, uh, yeah, I think Hoopa would be good, good to have in in Oris. And I would like to see it back. I don't think it should have been banned in the first place, of course. But now I think it'd be a welcome addition because uh, it definitely it wouldn't be broken. And yeah, that, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, this this game is brutal to watch. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, anyway, uh, Hoopa would have been nice to see in this game. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope maybe we see Hoopa back in Oris someday. Uh, unbound, of course, you know. Base Hoopa is actually pretty cool. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.